So Nvidia versus AMD, let's get into it. This video is brought to you by my personal pocketbook. So if you'd like to help me out, like, subscribe, and check out my Patreon page so I can make more videos like this one. All right, so I need to preface this video with a few things. First of all, if you need a GPU, like if you need one now, you don't have one in your system or you're building a system, you need to buy whichever GPU you can find, Nvidia or AMD, you're gonna be okay with it. But when you do finally get it, make sure you grab onto it and hold on to it, never let go. And it, but if you do let go, make sure you sell it at least at the price you got it for. You could probably get more than you paid for it, even if it's something like, like a Zotac. No offense, Zotac, but typically people don't want your cards. I'm not sure why. Maybe because they run hotter, maybe a few other things. But if you have a Zotac card, no offense meant. But anyways, again, one thing I have to mention before we continue with this video is that this is not an exhaustive list at all. This is not some kind of professional review of which card you, sh you should get. This is essentially gonna be me ranting about the reasons why I have made a particular decision and why I'm going to try to get one particular card. So I'm going to go through the different things that I find important. Some of them that I'm not really that, you know, picky on, but essentially I'm just going to talk about why I think those things are important to me with either card and which one I prefer. And I hope that you can at least extrapolate from that some things that will help you make your purchasing decision. So the first one right off the bat, obviously, is performance. So we're, we're more looking at the 6800 XT from AMD and the 3080 from Nvidia. And if you've watched any of the videos like I've seen, there's many on YouTube right now from Digital Foundry, J's Two Cents, uh, and several others. Um, but what I've kind of seen, or at least I can distill down from that, is that the 3080 is the winner there. And the, the AMD 6800 XT does win on occasion but overall, the 3080 is going to win. And that's not like it's a really important thing to me. Um, like I said, it, it, it's, I'm going to say this many times. I've said it before. I'm going to say it again. If it doesn't matter where it matters where you're coming from, it doesn't matter between the two cards so much. It could matter, but considering they're so close, it doesn't really matter. So like in my case, I've talked about this before. I'm coming from a 1070. If I went up to either of those cars, I'm not going to notice the difference between either, either two of them, right? So either one of them is going to be a huge upgrade for me. So try to take that into account when you're purchasing your card. Think about where you're coming from. If you're someone who buys every, every generation, I could see why, yeah, you'd want to know which card is going to edge out. You want to have the best card, even if it's just for bragging rights, right? So. Yeah, the 3080 wins there, but that's not the thing that's going to really decide my decision. Neither is ray tracing. And while we've seen that ray tracing does work better with Nvidia, definitely because they're more, what would you say, mature platform for it? Because this is their second generation. Because the 2000 generation of GPUs from Nvidia did have ray tracing, but it was a bit lackluster, not a lot of titles, and there's still not a lot of titles right now, but there are some more on the horizon. And on that front, and I'm going to go off tangents all through this video, by the way. It's, we're going to see more performance in that respect from AMD as well. Because like we're seeing with the consoles, not that they're really utilizing ray tracing that much yet. And if you didn't know, the consoles, that's Xbox, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, whatever it's called, Xbox Series X, and the PlayStation 5. Thank you, Sony, for actually having some consistency, consistency there. But... <clears throat> Once we see that mature, we're going to see AMD really shine later, probably more with our DNA 3, but also with our DNA 2. It's definitely going to show later with newer titles. But we're talking about right now, ray tracing, not a lot of titles. NVIDIA is obviously the winner there, especially when you consider DLSS. And again, like ray tracing, not a lot of titles. You can actually do that kind of upsampling or whatever it's called. But anyways, NVIDIA wins. Again, not really my huge deciding factors. There's only a few applications where I'm kind of interested in using it. One of them being Minecraft. Don't hate me, but I love Minecraft. I've been playing my Minecraft for, I don't know, I first started playing 10 years ago, I think, around when it was like in beta or something. There was barely anything to it. And every few years, I kind of jump back into it and get hooked on it again. So I'm sure my cycle's coming up and... I'm going to cycle. <laughs> I'm going to be back into it soon. So on the whole performance front there, 
I see NVIDIA as the winner. And again, we're not talking about the 3070, we're not talking about the straight 6800. We can talk about that maybe in another time, but I think actually the, 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 the 6800 is the better buy there. But the 3080 is gonna win it for me. And the next thing might be something that a lot of people would brush off. I definitely did when I first heard about many of these things. But really, as I started to think about it, as recently I was using my computer, I found they were more and more important to my use case. So those are the bells and whistles that come with either of them. So basically the features and extra programs you can use or applications that kind of come standard with the GPU and the software that's around. So for NVIDIA's sake, that's gonna be GeForce, right? And I've been using NVIDIA's cards for, I don't know, eight, nah, seven years now, six or seven years. I had a 770, now I'm a 1070. And as I was trying to capture you. So I think it's time for me to yeet, as the kids say, my GoPro out the window. It just crapped the bed again. Anyways, so what I was saying was I was trying to record some game footage from No Man's Sky recently, as I was just trying to do some B-roll footage for my last video, and I was struck by how easy it was to use GeForce. You got the hotkeys right in there, and the, the resolution and the actual output is fantastic. Every time it works so well for me and it hasn't failed yet. So that's something that I would like to have in my next GPU. So it kind of makes me stick with, with that NVIDIA there. But, but other ones that they have actually coming out, so the ones they've announced for this series of GPUs, so that's their broadcast suite. So that includes RTX voice, the background blur and replacement, not that I find that super important and the auto frame, which could be kind of cool. But the RTX voice is one that I find particularly interesting because that's something like, I think I mentioned it last time that I live b beside a busy street. There's gonna be, there's lots of noise all the time. So even if you're just talking with friends while you're gaming, it'd be nice to actually cut out those noise and not have those distractions. Now, whether it can be used in any other kind of application with still like straight up recording into Audacity or uh, Adobe Audition or whatever the heck you're using, I'm not sure about that yet, but it could be really useful to actually use that AI to cut out the background noise. So that's another tick for NVIDIA for me. Now on the AMD side, it's more performance driven stuff and kind of bells and whistles. So like the AMD Smart Access Memory, which is supposed to give you up to 11% more performance by giving the CPU access to the VRAM. How did I remember that? I don't know. Uh, but that's only locked to Ryzen 5000 CPUs and obviously the new 6000 series Radeon card. So it, like for me, I don't plan to upgrade my 3000 series Ryzen CPU. Like I, I don't need to, it's working fine. I don't need to. So I can't get access to that. So that's a no-go for me. Uh, what else? There's Rage Mode, which again, um, I believe that isn't locked to the 5000 series, but it's basically like an overclocking button. Uh, also the Infinity Cache which is just means more fast, less power usage, which is great. Less power usage is great. And I think it's, it's great to have that kind of power, power, excuse me, power efficiency in the card. But uh, all of that is just leading to its better performance. And all of that comes out in the raw performance data for the most part. So it's led to where it is, which is great, but those things really don't do it for me. And, and also the Nvidia Reflex, uh, AMD has their answer to that. And, I, I don't play a lot of competitive games. Like I play Rocket League, um, but it's, I'm not super competitive. Like I play com the competitive, but like not for me, maybe for you, if you're somebody who plays uh, f first person shooters and stuff like that, I think that would really could make a difference. Um, if you're someone who is into actual competitive gaming, but for me, it's not a deal breaker and Honestly, I don't even know the real numbers on which one's better, NVIDIA side or AMD, but uh, that's something you could look into if you're interested. And while we're talking about bells and whistles, um, AMD has been known to come with other bells and whistles or I don't know, honks and I don't know, I don't know, I'm trying to make it sound stupid, but I'm just making myself sound stupid, typical. But anyways, AMD driver issues. And that's something I haven't seen recently. So I've, I've actually looked around to see if people are having driver issues with the 6000 series Radeon cards and it appears as though not really. So that's a plus that they work, I guess, even though Nvidia had their issues, but they seem to be resolved now. But hey, if you have worried, worries about that, keep looking. If you can find anything about AMD driver issues with the 6000 series cards, please let me know down below.
So the next thing I want to talk about is G-Sync and FreeSync, and these are now mainstays in gaming on the PC. So my, me, myself, I have a new monitor. It's the ASUS VGAQL XC something, something, something. Anyways, it has G-Sync, <laughs> G-Sync certified FreeSync. So for me, it doesn't really matter. I can go either way. Uh, I can go with a NVIDIA card, I can go with a AMD card, it's not gonna make a difference for me. But if you're someone who has a G-Sync monitor and it has G-Sync hardware in the monitor, you're kind of pigeon held there, which is unfortunate. So hopefully that thing, that can get spread out more. And we're not having these locked in kind of walled gardens when it comes to monitors anymore. And even though I'm sure maybe there's better performance you're gonna have with the GeForce, or sorry, the G-Sync monitor, I don't know if it, is a, is a huge difference, but we, we'd have to actually do comparison, comparison. I'm really happy with my G-Sync certified monitor anyways. Now the next thing is definitely much more niche. And this is something that was brought to me, I think I was watching a Linus Tech Tips video about the new 6800 cards from AMD. And that is their, I, I think I mentioned it already, screen capturing ability, but specifically the fact that they're having artifacting and when they compared side to side the Nvidia screen capturing and between AMD screen capturing AMD had a lot of artifacts in their footage which is a big problem for me I like to use footage from my gameplay in my videos I, I can't have that so it might get fixed in the future I don't know for sure who knows but uh, as it stands right now Nvidia is a win for me again and the next thing is video editing and that's particular to me and other people who also video edit is that Adobe Premiere really utilizes the CUDA cores in NVIDIA's cards. So when it comes to compiling videos, it's gonna be another win for NVIDIA. Even with the VRAM bump that AMD has of 16 gigabytes, NVIDIA still wins with their 10 gigabytes on the 3080. All right, and the last thing is cost. Well, guess what? The two cards I think are what, $50 apart? Something close to that $700 versus 650, not really though because you know all the AIB cards are much more expensive and good luck getting a Founders Edition card or a reference card from AMD. It's gonna be pretty difficult. Obviously here, where I live in Canada, can't even get a Founders card from NVIDIA, which is very sad because they are gorgeous. But uh, I was digging through some stuff. I keep looking at the GoPro. I was digging through some stuff recently and I came across this receipt, which is actually my receipt for my 1070. And I don't know if you can see this, I'm gonna to try to hold it up there. Maybe you could see it, but look at the total. I don't know if you saw that, but it says $679.87 Canadian cents. Damn, well guess what? The same class of card, so that's an eight gigabyte 1070. The same class of card, the Strix from ASUS of the 2070 is like 950 something around there dollars plus tax. We're going over a thousand dollars. That's over three hundred dollars more oh like four home almost four hundred dollars more that's insane freaking insane i understand it's a better card the 2070s or sorry the 3070 is a fantastic card but damn these prices are just going mental it's scaring me like i'm like i'm looking at that and like can i even afford a 3080 i'm probably gonna end up with a 3070 i'm just gonna always forever 70 class which is well, oh, boohoo. First world problems, right? Like, whatever. Damn, these cards are expensive. So, what am I going to do? I think uh, if you're listening to this already and you watch this whole video, it's pretty clear. For me, at least, I'm going with NVIDIA. Uh, but if you're just, honestly, if you're just a straight up gamer and you're just gaming, I'd be hard pressed not to get this, just the 6800. Not the XT, just the 6800. Out of those four cards, and we're not talking about the 3060 Ti that just came out, but between the 3070, the 6800, and the 6800 XT, and the 3080, I'd buy the 6800. I think it's the best bang for your buck. Absolutely. I'm going to try to buy a 3080, but I don't, I don't think I'm going to get one. By the time I could get one, the new 20 gigabytes are going to be out. And the 10 gigabytes, or is it 16 gigabyte 30 70s are going to be out. And it's going to be a whole new ball game anyways. But hey, if you're out there, don't worry about it too much. If you find a card, no matter what it is, just buy it. And if you have to, just resell it, maybe to a friend. Hey, 
I'd be willing to buy a card, at least not, you know, around MSRP. If you can get it to me, that'd be cool. But no, keep it for yourself, enjoy it, enjoy it, and know that you're one of the lucky ones who actually was able to manage and snag one of these things. Anyways, I've been rambling for far too long. This has been Nick on Tech Illiterate. My name is Nick, again. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe and do all that stuff. I'm getting very tired. I don't know what's going on with my brain. I, 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 I. See you later. Ha, ha, ha.